Okay, so if you remember yesterday, we did part one of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. So you're going to continue working on the same um, Cami assignment. So open up the same assignment. And when you do that, it should look like this. And we left off at the top of this page. Now, at the top of this page, for some reason, this is the same as this down here. So I just kind of crossed it out. Um, you're welcome to do that, or you can leave it as it is. All right, so let's just recap what happened in part one. So in part one, we meet um, King Arthur, we meet Sir Gawain, and we meet the Knights of the Round Table, and it's New Year's Day. And they're sitting around having a feast, and before they eat, they wanted to tell a story. Before the story started, um, we had this Green Knight kind of interrupt their gathering. And the Green Knight basically um, taunted them into a challenge, and the challenge was, was a blow for a blow. What you do to me, I get to do to you in one year. Nobody really wanted to accept this challenge except for King Arthur. At that point, um, Sir Gawain stepped in to make King Arthur not have to go through with this challenge. So Sir Gawain... Um, accepted the challenge to save King Arthur and to also kind of prove himself to be a knight of the round table. And during this challenge, he took the Green Knight's ax and basically chopped off his head. At that point, we would assume the Green Knight was dead. However, that's not the case. The Green Knight picked up his head and got on his horse and basically said, you need to find me in a year so I can administer the same blow to you. So we left off um, with Sir Gawain on his journey to try and find the Green Knight. And right now he's, he's currently, um, currently trying to find where he's located. And as he asked people, about the Knight of the Green Chapel, nobody really knows who he's talking about. So this, this where we left off is kind of strange. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. Um, just want to remind you before we continue, our, fo our focus questions are, where is irony in the story and what type of irony is it? What are character traits of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight? And then our key important story details we're going to put in blue. Then we're going to look at the three different types of irony. Situational irony would be in pink. Verbal irony in orange, dramatic irony in green, and then character traits we're going to underline or add a text box. Okay, so again, starting on this page at the top. On Christmas Eve, weary and disheartened, he rode the exhausted Gringolet through the marsh, praying that he might find somewhere to shelter. All of a sudden, the swirling mist parted and the marshland gave way to parkland, and in the distance, he caught sight of a magnificent castle on a small wooded hill. Thank God, thought Gwaine. Now I can only pray that whoever lives here will welcome me in for Christmas. His prayers were soon answered, and he found a warm welcome when he knocked on the gate. The moment he entered the yard, many servants and squires scurried around to help him dismount. Gringlet was led away to the stables of the saddle sore. Gwain was shown to a hall where a big log fire burned in the hearth. All right, all of these are important story details. So I'm going to highlight in blue. He was hoping to find a place to stay and he, he found a place and they welcomed him. The lord of the castle, a large genial man with red-brown beard and thick brown hair, clasped Gwain firmly by the hand, welcomed him into his home, and invited him to stay for as long as he wished. He said that everyone was delighted that a famous knight of the round table had found his way to such a remote castle. All right, so I'm going to highlight that he was welcomed and he could stay as long as he wished. Gwain was treated with great hospitality. The squires took him to his chamber, helped him take off his rusty armor, and gave him a warm, fur-lined robe to wear. Then they fed, then they led him back to a comfortable chair near the fire, where a sumptuous feast waited for him. 
After the meal, the lady of the castle came in, and she was the most beautiful woman that Gwen had ever seen in his life. All right, we need to highlight that this lady was the most beautiful woman that he had ever seen. Um, I'm going to make a text box here. And it doesn't really have to do with any of our focus questions. But to me, this sounds like something's unusual. I feel like something's wrong here. This is almost too good to be true. The lady was even lovelier than Guinevere. Gwen spoke to her with great politeness, bowing deeply to kiss her hand and smiling, laughing, and taking every opportunity to display his skills in conversation and courtly manners for which he was justly renowned. All right, all of that again in blue. And this is direct characterization right here. I don't know if I can go over it or not. I can't. Okay. Um, a direct character trait of Gwen is polite. On Christmas morning, many more guests arrived, and three days passed quickly, in feasting and celebration. Sir Gwain enjoyed himself so much that he almost forgot why, why he was there. At each meal, he found the ladies sitting next to him, chattering and giggling, and offering her servants to attend to him. Um, let's highlight that. She's flirting with him. On the fourth day, most of the guests left early in the morning, but when Gwen began to get ready to go, the Lord stopped him. Do you have to leave us so soon? He asked. Please stay a bit longer, unless you think you're not worthy to have such a noble guest. Highlight that in blue. It's certainly not that, replied Gwen. You've been extremely generous, but I must learn to find the Green Chapel. I made a promise that I'd be there on New Year's Day, and I don't even know where it is. I like that in blue. Then we're all in luck, said the Lord. The Green Chapel is only a few miles from here, so you can stay with us until the day of your appointment. Highlight that in blue. We'd be delighted to have you. Gwen was relieved. All right, so I still have an uneasy feeling about this. I just feel like they're going to try and trick him. I don't trust these people. Queen was relieved to hear this, and he tried to put all of his thoughts on the green, on the green night out of his mind as he agreed to stay. I'm sure you're still tired from your journey, said the Lord. What you need is rest and plenty to eat before you go. Why don't you have a lion tomorrow and come down when you don't feel like it? I'm going to be out in the forest all day hunting deer, but my wife can look after you. Gwen said he thought that this was a good idea. Okay, highlight that in blue. Um, so basically this man, the Lord is leaving Gwen alone with his wife. <laughs> with his wife that's flirting with him. Ooh, look here. Okay, let's make a bargain, added the Lord. 
that in the evening we'll exchange whatever we've won during the day. Sir Gawain agreed to this game, although he didn't really know what the Lord meant. Okay, so we have another deal here. And Gwen accepted this deal without fully understanding. Okay, just to recap, the deal is exchange what they got for the day. So the next morning, when the Lord left, Gwen dozed in his bed, protected from draughts of the thick curtain which hung all around it. He was awoken by a light, a light tapping on the door, and peeping out from behind the curtains, saw the lady of the castle poking her head into the room. Good morning, Sir Gwen, she said sweetly. It's time to wake up. Your breakfast is ready. It would be a shame to spend such a lovely morning in bed when we've so much to talk about. Then she closed the door gently. Okay, highlight all of that in blue. Gwen was still sleepy and didn't feel like it, and didn't feel at all like leaving his warm bed, but he didn't want to be rude, so he got up and dressed and went downstairs. Here's my favorite night at last, said the lady giggling in a girlish way when she saw him. And as my husband is away, I can do exactly what I want with you. She straightening his tunic and began brushing the imaginary specks from his shoulders. Then she sat down on the bench at the table and patted the space next to her. Now come and sit beside me and we'll have a little chat. Okay. We need to highlight this here. I'm going to add a text box. The lady is flirting with Gwen while her husband is out. And so she went on talking, laughing, and flirting all morning. Sir Gawain responded courteously, but coolly, pretending that he didn't understand what she was hinting at. Although he found her beautiful, he remained very conscious of the fact that she was his host's wife and that he was a knight of the round table. In fact, he was not really in the mood for games, as the shadow of the green knight loomed even closer. All right. So it directly tells us that she's flirting with him. We no longer have to imply that. The next thing I want to do is let's get some stuff underlined. We have some quick character traits of Gwen here. All right, and I'm going to add a text box. Um, we have some direct characterization. He's courteous. I would consider him also polite. Professional, maybe. He's acting as a knight. When finally the lady got up to leave, Gwen didn't try to prevent her. So she said, it's hard to believe that you're really Sir Gwen. 
And why is that? He asked anxiously, worried that he had offended her. Because Sir Gwain would never spend such a long time with a lady and then let her leave without asking for a kiss. Highlight it in blue. If that is your wish, I will comply, he replied. He leaned forward gracefully and kissed, and she kissed him when they got up and left. Okay, so the lady kissed him. When the Lord came home with the deer he had killed that day, he offered them to Gwaine in exchange for whatever he had won. Okay, remember that's their deal. So let's go ahead and get that highlighted. In return, Gwaine put his hands around the Lord's neck and kissed him. Okay, let's highlight that in pink because that is situational irony. We certainly wouldn't expect him to do that. We would expect him to maybe lie to him and say that nothing happened. Is this what you won today? Asked the Lord rather surprised. That and nothing else, said Gwen, and I'll give it to you freely as it was given to me. Okay, highlight it in blue. But where did you get it from? Asked the Lord. Telling you that was not part of our agreement, said Gwen, and they both laughed. On the way to supper, they agreed to play the game, the same game the following day. Okay, highlight that in blue. And then we're gonna go up here and underline this section here, because that's giving us character traits of Gwen. This is telling us that he's clever, he's smart. The next morning, the Lord left early to hunt wild boar in the marshes. Highlight that in blue. After he'd left, the lady spent all morning trying to seduce Gwen. That also needs to be in blue. But once again, he resisted her, her advances by turning everything to a joke, though with such skill that he managed to not to offend her. All right, let's underline that. It's a character trait. He's still being honorable. Behaving how a knight should behave. By the end of the morning, all that she had given to him were two kisses. For some reason, the word kisses got cut off. So I'm just going to add it in there. When the Lord returned, he presented Gwen with a huge wild boar, and without explanation, Gwen gave him two kisses. Highlight it in blue. You've done well, said the Lord as they went to supper. All evening, the lady flirted with Gwen right under her husband's nose. And all evening, Gwen treated her very politely. Direct character trait right there. At the end of the meal, the Lord announced in the morning that he was going to hunt foxes and suggested that they renew their bargain. 
Gwen again agreed. So the next morning when the Lord left at sunrise, he lay in his bed having nightmares about the green night. Okay, highlight it in blue. He was woken by sunshine streaming into the room as the lady threw open the window to let the frosty morning air. Still asleep, Sir Gwain? she asked. And on such a fine morning, what a lazy night you are. Today. When she came down, she kissed him good morning. She looked astonishing, astonishingly beautiful in her long robe and green sash, and with her illustrious hair decorated with sparkling jewels. Highlight that in blue. They chatted all morning, and she flirted even more than usual. Gwen trod a perilous path. If he rejected her outright, he would be offending her. Yet, if he responded in the way she wanted to, he'd be betraying his host. All of that needs highlighted in blue. So cleverly, he kept avoiding the subject and tactfully fended her declaration of love. Your heart must have been made of ice, she said at last. Why do I only get one kiss? Is it because you have another lady at Camelot? No other lady has my love, but I cannot love you either. Even though you are so charming and beautiful, he replied, for you already have a husband who is a better man than me. We need to underline that. That shows us character traits of Gwen. Okay, and this show shows us that he's honest. But just for today, we could forget that, couldn't we? She said. I'm afraid not, he replied, because I'm a knight and I would bring shame upon my knighthood if I forgot that even for a moment. Okay. Highlighted in blue. All right, and basically she's tempting him. But he still acts as a knight. Okay, and this is where we're going to stop for day two, and we'll finish it up tomorrow.